So now that we've looked at momentum and conservation of momentum, we want to realize that everything we've done so far has been in one dimension. And that just means that the collisions have all been along one plane. So we're moving here and we might have something sitting in the way and it just keeps going in this one dimension. So everything that we've done so far has been along one single plane. Okay, no matter what that plane is. So you might be thinking that there are obviously some collisions that happen in the car or whatever go off in a different direction. Or maybe the collision occurred between two things that was not head on. So for example, let's just say that we, oops. So for example, let's just say that we have a car traveling to the east. So we're going this direction, so west and east. So this car is going to the east and it collides with another car that is traveling to the north. So we have a car coming up in this direction. And we have a collision right here between those two things. You can probably see right off that the collision will result in the cars continuing on directly, not to the east or to the north, but off in some direction this way. All right, so we have some, some momentum going this way, we have some momentum going this way. So if they crash and stick together, they're not all going to go north. They're not all going to go east, but they're going to go off to the northeast in some direction. So just like we resolved our other vectors, like velocity and force, into components, we can do the same thing with momentum. So if we are interested in this momentum of both of those cars after the collision, we can solve for that because we have, we have some x component and we have some oops, y component there. So in our example, car A is traveling to the east, so we can say that it is traveling right along the y-axis. Or no, x-axis. <laughs> we could call it y, I guess, if we wanted. <clears throat> we typically don't. So if we're traveling to the east, we can say that we are traveling along this x-axis. This would mean that its momentum has no y component, and all of its momentum is traveling in its x component. Our second car, let's call this one, let's call this one car B, and this one car A. So car B is traveling to the east, and it doesn't have any y component to its momentum. It only has x momentum. Car A, on the other hand, is traveling directly to the north, so it has no x component to its momentum. All of it is in the y direction. After the collision, however, and let's assume here that the two cars stick together. Since this is all in the same situation as before our collision, we can't go around changing our coordinate system. So we can't now say that this is our x direction or this is our y direction. We have to keep, we have to keep our x direction this way and our y direction this way. So some of our final momentum is in the x direction. We have some component in the x direction, but then we also have some component in the y direction. Now what's nice about the conservation of momentum is that momentum is not just conserved overall, but is conserved along the coordinates as well. This means we can find out how much the momentum there is in the x direction before the collision, and that will be equal to the momentum in the x direction after the collision. The same thing for the y direction. The total momentum in the y direction before is equal to the total momentum in the y direction after. So p in the x direction is equal to p final in the x direction, and p in the y direction is equal to p y final. This means we can find out how much momentum there is in the x direction before the collision, and that will be equal to the momentum in the x direction after the collision. Same thing for the y direction. The total momentum in the y direction before is going to be equal to the total momentum after. So if we know all of our x and y components, we can find the resultant vector, which would be this right here, to find out our total final momentum. So how about we add in some numbers and see how this works out mathematically. <clears throat> 
So we have a 1,325 kilogram car. Um, let's call this car A. Moving north at 27 meters per second. And it is, so it's going to be going this direction. This is car A. And we have a mass of 1,325 kilograms. And we have an initial velocity of 27 meters per second. It's going to collide with a 2165 kilogram car moving east, so this is our east direction, at 17 meters per second. So our car is 2165 kilograms, and it's going to be 17 meters per second. They're going to stick together. And so just like we saw in our introduction, we are going to go off some direction this way. Okay, so this is going to be after the collision. So we talked about how momentum is being conserved overall, but also in each direction. Here, our, car, our cars are going to line up nicely um, in the x direction and the y direction. So we can, we can draw a coordinate system for that. So this could be our y direction and this can be our x direction. And that's nice because then our car that's moving east is all in the x direction and our car moving north is all in the y direction. So let's start with the x-momentum. We know that the x-momentum, well, let's move it up here. So we have x-momentum in the initial conditions are going to be equal to the final momentum in the x-direction. So we need to determine the x-momentum of each of our cars before and after. So car A is moving north um, and car B is moving to the east. So the total momentum in the x direction is going to be the momentum in the x direction of car A plus the momentum in the x direction of car B and that will be equal to the final momentum in the x direction of car A plus the final momentum in the x direction of car B. So that's what this is going to break down into. So our conservation of momentum starts with initial and final and then that's going to break down into each one of our cars. Now, car A is moving north, so it's going to the north, which is directly along the y-axis. So there is no x component for car A. So we can just scratch that out. That momentum is zero, because it's not moving in the x direction at all. Car B, on the other hand, is only moving in the x direction. There is no y component because it's moving just straight to the east. So all of our x momentum is going to be coming from the momentum of car B. Now both of these cars stick together, so their final x momentum will be the same. So we can write that as the final momentum in the x direction of both car A and B. Now we know that momentum is equal to mass times the velocity. So the momentum of car B is going to be the mass of car B times the velocity of car B. Okay, and this is going to be the initial conditions. So the momentum of car B is 17 times 2,100, yeah, and 65 kilograms times the velocity, which was 17 meters per second. And that's going to be our momentum over here. This is going to be equal to the mass of A and B times the final velocity of A and B in the x direction. So the mass of car A and B is going to be 2,165 plus 1,325. So that is going to be 3,490 kilograms times the velocity in the x direction of both of them. So we don't know final velocity, but we could find it, right? So if we take this final velocity in the x direction of A and B and we solve, uh, multiply our 2,165 times 17, divide by 3,490 kilograms, we are going to get the final velocity in the x direction of 10.5 meters per second. So this is going to be the velocity in the x direction, okay? 
that's our x component of our um, velocity and our momentum. So we can take this times our mass and we can get 36,805 momentums. So now we want to do the same thing in the y direction. It's going to look just like this. So our momentum in the y direction is going to be equal to the final momentum in the y direction. So that's going to include both of our cars. So the momentum in the y direction of car A plus the momentum in the y direction of car B is going to equal to the final momentum in the y direction of car A plus the final momentum in the y direction of car B. <clears throat> now, remember that car B is only moving in this x direction. There is no y direction, so we can cancel that out. <clears throat> so this will be, this will be zero. So the momentum in the y direction of A plus zero will be equal to, again these are stuck together, the final momentum in the y direction of both cars stuck together. So we're going to do the same thing that we did up here. We have the uh, mass of A times the velocity of A. It's going to be equal to the mass of AB times the final velocity in the y direction of AB. Move this down a little. So our mass of A was 1,325 kilograms, and its initial velocity was 27 meters per second. That will be equal to our 3,490 kilograms that we found up above. Those are both cars stuck together, times the final velocity in the y direction of both of them. So again, we can find the velocity of y of both of them by multiplying 1325 times 27 and dividing by 3,900 or 3,490 kilograms and we are going to get the, uh, the y component of our velocity is 10.3 meters per second. Now again if we want to find momentum we can do that. We can just take that times our mass and that will be 35,775 momentums. Okay. So now, what's kind of interesting here is not only do we have our momentum vectors, but we also have our, y, our uh, velocity vectors. So we have the y component and the x component of both of those particular properties. And so we can use that however we want. Now, in some problems it will ask for the velocity, and in some problems it will ask for the momentum. Well, we know now that after our collision, we can come along and we can draw this. So we have our car moving this direction in the x. So if we want to say we want to find momentum, our momentum in the x direction is going to be 35,775. Or no, that was the y, sorry. Our x direction was 36,805. There we go, make sure we get the right number. And then in the y direction, so our y component of our momentum was 35,775. Okay. So we have both of our components there. So what we can do then is redraw that resultant vector. So this is how much momentum we have in the x direction. This is how much we have in the y direction. Our component vector is that final momentum. Okay. We can just use Pythagorean here. We can take this squared times this squared. Let's see. So 36805 squared plus... 35,775 squared is going to be equal to our final momentum squared. So 36,805 squared plus 35,775 squared 
square root, we are going to get a final momentum of both of our cars together of 51,327 kilogram meters per second. So that's our final momentum. Now we also are interested in what direction. In general, we could say that it's northeast, but a lot of times we want to be a little more specific than that. But we do know that this is a right triangle, and we actually know now all of the sides of our right triangle. So we could pick our favorite uh, trig function, and we could solve for theta. Let's just use tangent, just because. I don't know why. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the tangent of this angle is going to be the opposite, which is our y component, so 35,775, over the adjacent, which is our 36,805. So to solve for this, we're going to take those two things and divide them and do the inverse of the tangent. So 35,775 divided by 36,805 is 0.972, and then we're going to inverse tangent that, and so what we get is theta equal to 44 degrees. So to, to really describe this, this is 44 degrees. Now keep in mind in our coordinate system, up here is zero. So in our quadrant system, if we were actually going to measure that whole thing, um, <clears throat> We would, we would measure that probably from here to here. But another way that we could write that is we could say that this is 44 degrees north of east. 